<laughs> These gates are normally locked shut. But at 2.30 every afternoon on the US-Mexican border, they open for authorised entry into America. Born and bred in Mexico, the cattle come to the States for eventual slaughter. Each one is documented and then counted in by a US border official. They cross to America legally, as do millions of people each year for work, shopping, even tourism. But there are hundreds of thousands more immigrants who try, and often succeed, to get in under the radar. They have manufactured ladders on the Mexican side, and when they're, uh, they're on this side, they just slide down like a firefighter. And does that happen a lot? <laughs> on a daily basis, yes. Well, border patrols, they're humans too. They have families. They go home. The, these guys don't. They just live on top of that hill. What, and they're scouting to let people know when they can cross? Yeah, when it's clear for them to jump, so, or, or the drug smugglers, you know. Perhaps the one fact of the presidential campaign we all remember was Donald Trump's promise of a wall. When you get up close, you realize quite how tall a task it is to police this border. From empty desert in these arid parts to the lush Rio Grande region, the border is porous. One of the main reasons an estimated 11 million illegal immigrants live in the US. When Donald Trump first mooted building a wall across almost 2,000 miles of America, many laughed. That was back when lots of people didn't rate him as a serious contender. Now he's president-elect. And the idea of a huge wall, what he described as a tall, impenetrable, beautiful southern border, well, that looms large here, particularly in states like Arizona. In nearby Nogales, a classic border town where more than 90% of the population is Latino, their new president-to-be's description of many Mexicans as drug smugglers, rapists and criminals has hit home. So have his pledges to speed up the deportation of immigrants without legal papers. I have been receiving a lot of calls after the winning of Mr. Trump, you know, and a lot of people is afraid about it. And they don't know what to do. It's a lot of rumors things want to happen. As they say, they want to start uh, dumping people across the border for, for a million, thousand. We don't know yet. I came across this noisy car full. Clinton supporting Kathleen, who's Mexican, and her colleague Gary, who voted Trump. Because he, I think he's racist against us Mexican Latino people. And um, I'm married to my husband, which is from Jalisco, Guadalajara. I have four children from him. He's been deported from 2007, and I had hopes to fix his papers, and I don't know if there's a really big chance on that now. Trump being um, president, hopefully, we'll have more opportunities, us Americans, we can make more money and then we would take our money and we would help the underprivileged. When Kathleen says how upset she is, do you worry you made the wrong decision? Do you worry that he is racist, as she says? No, I don't think he's racist. The things Trump said, he said, but he, he, a lot of times it was tongue in cheek or he's making characterizations and he's taking it out of context. Do you think when you heard things like the wall, the being the building the wall, or that everyone will be, you know, all the illegals will be deported, do you think that's actually going to happen? Well, now it is going to happen. I know you believe that's, that. I believe it's going to happen um, for everyone that's here illegally, that's trying to make a better life for their families, their children. Um, I think every one of them are going to be deported. Not everyone who comes into our country illegally is looking for the American dream. Arizona's notoriously hardline Sheriff Arpaio already imposed some of the nation's toughest immigration laws. He's had thousands of illegals deported over the years. Donald Trump's a fan, and Arpaio's even been touted as a possible head of Homeland Security. The sheriff was up for re-election. An orchestrated campaign to get Latinos to oust him paid off. He lost on Tuesday. I'm Sheriff Joe Arpaio, and I ask for your vote. It was important because, you know, there's once you get a lot of people involved, that's number one, that's very important. That means the people really care of what's going on. When you don't care about what's going on, they'll do whatever they want. So they, they were, he was doing what he was doing because he had the support of his people. But what about the other people? Now, all those people, all the Mexican people, the Latino people got together and look, there's the result, he's out. 
But Latinos didn't have the same success for Hillary Clinton. In 15 of the last 16 presidential contests, Arizona voted Republican. But this time, the Democrats saw it as a swing state, believing, with Latinos now making up almost a third of the population, that group could turn the state blue if enough of them voted. They didn't. A lot of uh, hopes were down. That means it was so many promises with uh, the, the Obama administration that were never fulfilled. So if you're expecting a lot of things to happen and never happen, who are you going to blame? You're going to blame the people on top, which was the president. And the president, unfortunately, was a Democrat. Even though Latinos across America favored Hillary Clinton by a huge margin, there were exceptions. And in the heart of downtown Nogales, I came across the local Republican headquarters. I thought that I was going to get the, uh, the, uh, all the businesses burned down, but no. Mike Melendez is the councilwoman's brother, but he stood and lost on the local Republican ticket on Tuesday. It may be surprising, given Donald Trump's rhetoric, that almost a fifth of America's voting Latinos still opted for him. He's saying um, that he's going to create lots of jobs and uh, it's going to increase the, uh, the minimum uh, um, income that the families have. Here in, in this part of, uh, of the United States, the minimum um, income is around um, $17,000 a year. That doesn't allow you to do a lot of things. The United States uh, used to be the uh, land of opportunity, but here in Santa Cruz County, it, it's, uh, it looks like we're just a, a colony of Mexico because uh, once you pass the border, it doesn't look like you're in the United States. For the moment, border life continues as normal. Around 40,000 legal crossings happen through Nogales every day. For many, Donald Trump's only been stating the obvious. If you don't have the right to be in the US, you shouldn't be here at all.